So this is my first attempt at the suspension rope bridge. Um, I'll play it real quick. As you can see, I still had issues with uh, the ending points right here, constraining and then kind of uh, pushing, uh, penetrating through. Um, I was going to fix those, but in all honesty, uh, I'm going to redo the whole project, uh, having better constraints, more dynamic, um, things like that. So um, I'm not extremely uh, happy with how it turned out and the ability to break it apart and uh, you know break any point in the lines, uh, break these guys when there's too much uh, weight on one side or even just you know having an object come in here and collide with the planks and destroy the planks. Um, I want the bridge to be able to do all of that, and I just can't do it with this uh, asset as is. So um, I'm going to completely redo it, plus I want the ability to be able to um, control the length, how many planks are in there, all dynamically, all procedurally, and I, I just can't do it in Maya. Um, it's not that Maya, it's not that it can't be done in Maya, it's just uh, I, with my current knowledge set, cannot accomplish it. Um, so again, we can play it. We can see I added a little bit of a turbulence in here. Um, so there is turbulence going on uh, for like a wind turbulence. Uh, however, it's only turbulence in the uh, the the hair follicle that is actually controlling the whole the whole bridge. Um, so it's not an actual uh, field that is controlling it, which again is what I would like to do, is have the artist be able to drop in a field and be able to control that field just like they would control it with any particle effect. Um, so uh, yeah, so we can see it is behaving pretty well. Um, we can see the planks bending and flexing the way that it, you know, the way that you would expect. Um, it sags pretty well. Um, there's not really any penetration in the planks, uh, except for back here, of course, and then the dropping of the lines and stuff like that. They bend. Uh, all these lines stay where they're supposed to go, which is exactly what we want in the overall effect. Um, we do have a little bit of loss of penetration here, but that might just be a, like a weight issue or something. But um, again, we kind of drop this idea. So. Uh, I'll just do a quick rundown of how I put this guy together. Um, obviously, I modeled out the geometry. Um, we'll throw on our joints, and we'll hide our polys. So here's the uh, joint cage that I use to control everything. Um, uh, maybe we'll throw on our polys again. Uh, okay, so I have the orange joints going down and that is being controlled by a hair uh, follicle system <laughs> and uh, that hair follicle system is is constrained at both ends and so it droops down like a clothesline which is exactly what we want and uh, these bottom joints which are controlling the planks are actually a uh, parent constraint with uh, orient uh, with um, Oh, uh, what is it called? Um, it basically uh, keep maintain offset. Uh, it, we, we're maintaining the offset of uh, the joints. So um, we have this ladder effect where we have the single joint chain, and then from that joint chain we split out, and that is creating this ribbon effect that goes across. And then attached to that is a single joint chain that goes across that is controlling the rope and those are parented to the uh, ends of the orange joint chain and then from there I have another joint chain going down which is controlling each of these ropes I was going to have individual joints that allowed a little bit more of a flexibility but in all honesty again we're switching it going with something completely different we're making it completely dynamic we're um, revamping this quite a bit so, um, <laughs> yeah, you can play around a little bit. Uh, anyway, so it is, in my opinion, kind of cool not to sound pompous or whatever, full of myself, but, um, spent a lot of time on this. Uh, so let's see. We have 
the hair system and the follicle and we'll throw on NURBS curve and we're gonna hide our polys and our joints. And so here we can see the NURBS curve that we uh, selected and we're turning it into a um, IK spline and using, uh, well we basically created the joint chain, created an IK spline, used that curve, turned it into a hair follicle system, a hair system, and then made that curve, the, 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 cu the curve that was created from the IK spline, we made that dynamic. Um, so that is what's controlling everything. As you can see, as the um, animation plays, you can see the hair moving and such. Um, I really don't know what else to say. Uh, the reason why I chose individual joints, uh, joint chain here, um, I probably should have done individual joints attach and attach those to the individual joint chains, and then that way I could have broken up the uh, the rope more. Um, but for right now, this is what we did. Uh, also, I was going to break off, be, be able to break off each of these, which would have allowed me to do that. Um, I should have had a single joint chain going across to each of these for the planks. Um, and that way I could have broken that constraint and then popped the board down, things like that. But again, uh, this was kind of a proof of concept, really. Um, kind of a, a what to shoot for type of thing. Um, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of the parameters and stuff like that of uh, what you can change um, here. Uh, it's it's pretty dynamic. Um, really, I wanted it to be di dynamic. I, I a lot of people have done uh, animatable uh, rope bridges, things like that. Um, I have yet to really see a completely procedural uh, dynamic one. Um, so that's kind of where I'm, I'm heading. So, uh, yeah. Um, the hair system, it, it, it's, it's kind of problematic in the, in the, in the, in the extent that if I had two hair follicle or hair lines, um, going across, they do this weird, um, bending in the middle and sagging and they go, uh, they, they start coming in to, uh, towards each other in the middle. And I didn't want that. I could have added a force of sorts in the middle to keep them uh, spaced apart, but it, it was just too problematic. Um, in Houdini, what I'm going to use is um, wires and use the wire sop to uh, to solve this. Um, I, I'm still not 100% sure how I'm going to solve the bottom down here. Um, I may use a wire sop and then just break the geometry in between and have the geometry behave like a single piece here. Again, I'm not 100% sure yet. It's still kind of a work in progress. Um, for the most part, we're using wire sops down and then uh, we're constraining it up at the top and up at the bottom. Um, that constraint is going to be dynamic to the planks. <laughs> And uh, when the planks move, blah, they're, they're going to move. Uh, the planks are going to be rigid body objects, and so they're going to be able to collide with each other. And I'm hoping with that, I'll be able to get some flexibility in these um, support lines. Uh, let's go ahead and turn joints off. Uh, I'm going to get some flexibility in the, in the, the support lines, um, which we aren't having right now. So if we move this guy and he comes up, whoa, like that. Um, we should see some flexibility here. Right now, we're not, and that's what's giving us that arch. And it's it, again, it it's not at all realistic, and so that needs to change. Um, but all in all, we're getting see we get this nice uh, directional wind that we're getting in here. Um, so we are getting some good twisting, some good bending. Um, uh, let's see if I can hide this. Hide this. So we are getting uh, good twisting and bending motions in here, which is exactly what we want in the final concept, the final asset. Uh, but again, the uh, the power is going to be in the ability to procedurally model um, and then uh, therefore animate it. So whatever the artist chooses, however long this bridge uh, is going to be, however um, wide this bridge is going to be, all of that's going to be procedurally modeled and um, 
from there, those uh, that model is going to be uh, dynamically, uh, procedurally dynamically uh, animated, if that makes sense. Um, to further iterate what I've uh, already posted, um, I want to be able to have collision objects, so we import and uh, connect into the uh, into the, the dot network a collision object, uh, which will just be a sphere. Um, the artist will also be able to um, import uh, any geometry in the end result and be able to collide with any of these planks uh, depending on where that geometry is. That is going to be a challenge. Um, also, I want to be able to uh, uh, give the artist the ability to set breakpoints anywhere in this line and anywhere on these um, support knots and plank knots and, uh, and set weakness points. So if a weight is coming through here, like say if this was a bigger bridge and a car was going across it, um, if their weak point is right here, uh, the, the weight is going to be distributed across here and then when the car gets to here, most of the weight is going to be right here. Um, so really it's going to create weak points so if we set a weak point up here and the weight is right here then most of the weight is being pulled from here and here but if this is a weak point then this rope's going to break and then it's going to create more and more tension uh, through the rest of the ropes and they may or may not break depending on how much weight is applied um, so i want to do that i want to be able to also cut uh, i want to and when these ropes break and these ropes here, I want it to fray uh, procedurally. Um, I'm thinking about using an L system for that and creating an L system and then uh, creating that, putting that into a uh, wire stop. And so when these lines break, they divide out into uh, into six lines and then from there those break into six more lines these guys will only break uh, three times uh, these guys will probably break around seven I'm thinking uh, those are usually my two numbers uh, seven and three it's just kind of what I do uh, it's, it's a personal thing I try to include seven and three in everything that I do um, it just these lines being so small, I think three is going to be the magic number. Uh, these lines being bigger, uh, I think the ability to break it into seven uh, smaller pieces uh, will work. Um, the uh, planks I want to break with a uh, Vernoy uh, fracture. However, I want to be able to splinter like wood. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do that. I may have uh, predefined uh, splintering maps for the uh, for the Vernoy fracturing um, to be applied and then uh, it randomly switch and uh, select from those uh, maps uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure yet uh, it's still something I want to work on um, but this is my proof of concept that I made in Maya and uh, I think uh, from now I, I just want to work in Houdini to better understand uh, the capabilities of Houdini and the power of Houdini um, and to reflect that I have the ability to create assets in Houdini, um, I also obviously have the ability to create assets and rig and um, set up things in Maya as well, but um, I really want to be able to show that I can work in Houdini um, also. So um, I would have liked to have taken this to a, f a more completed stage, and I may still um, do that with uh, more um, constraining and stuff like that just to make it look like a nice bridge um, it won't it'll be like a background element if anything uh, it, I won't really be able to do character uh, stuff in here because well I can um, I can have a character come in here and then it will uh, affect the uh, the um, the curve itself uh, things like that uh, but ideally with Houdini um, creating rigid body objects here will um, pull down the uh, the support uh, lines and um, therefore uh, sag the, uh, the the guidelines accordingly and uh, create uh, that dynamic effect um, so that is my asset that is my asset idea and I welcome any comments uh, please keep them professional um, obviously uh, I understand that this probably isn't the best looking bridge out there um, it's really just a proof of concept, uh, and um, I, I could have easily taken this further. Uh, also, one thing that I want to do uh, with the final uh, output um, asset is the ability for to give the artist. Uh, uh, I want to give the artist the ability to um, change the geometry of these lines. So, 
um, if the artist chooses chains, for instance, uh, you can create a chain um, asset, um, things like that. Uh, that will be uh, much more of a challenge later on, but for right now I just want to get the bridge done. And then um, I also want to give the artist the ability to change out the geometry of the support towers. And then um, in addition, I want to give the uh, artist the ability to have a profile curve. Uh, it'll be a ramp curve and they will be able to set the profile of the uh, support towers and how many um, uh, subdivisions in uh, Y there's going to be. So if they want four uh, to be create the square effect or six to make it a little more rounder, things like that. Um, they'll be able to do that and be able to procedurally uh, change the support tower profile as, uh, as uh, they please. So I want to be able to add as many artist friendly controls as I possibly can, making this as easy of an asset as uh, it can be to use. Um, but I wanted to make it as dynamic as possible so that the artist really can just come in here, break the bridge, damage it, do whatever. Um, I want to be able to have uh, set it up so if the artist sets it on fire, um, there's going to be a, a temperature, uh, you know, temperature functions uh, later down the road, uh, much later down the road. I want to continue and build this asset up and make it as powerful as I possibly can. Um, it's going to be a long road, but uh, yeah, so I want to be able to uh, burn it. Um, each of these planks are going to burn at different rates than the, fi than the, than the ropes, things like that. Um, the heat from the fire is going to determine uh, where the weak points are. Once the uh, fire um, heats it up at a, to a certain point and burns a certain uh, time, then it, uh, it burns through that rope and breaks the rope and the bridge breaks apart and the fire con uh, the, the bridge you know falls apart in two different pieces or whatever how many how many different pieces and the fire stays on to each of these pieces so uh, that's my concept um, sorry if I spoke a little fast uh, it's gonna it's supposed to be a short video just kind of describing what I uh, am trying to accomplish here um, I'm not saying that Maya can't accomplish everything that I want it to um, it's already with um, the uh, small amount of time that I've applied to just this asset um, it's already doing a pretty uh, impressive amount of work um, so you can definitely do everything that you uh, that I want to accomplish in Maya it's probably gonna take some custom plugin uh, some code um, write some expressions things like that that um, I, I just can't get done in the amount of time that I need and uh, with the ease and flexibility. Um, like I said, it can probably still get done, but um, really, it's uh, I, I, I'm just learn uh, turning to Houdini just because um, more personal reasons and uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> just the uh, the power and flexibility that um, Houdini has inherent in it. Um, for procedural modeling and uh, and the dynamics. So uh, thank you, and uh, again, feel free to uh, leave any comments, uh, like my video on either YouTube or Vimeo, and please uh, feel free to check out my blog at russellabs.blogspot.com, and uh, feel free to leave any comments there. Um, I'll be posting my uh, progress on uh, the bridge asset, and uh, when I get it done, I will um, be glad to uh, share my bridge asset uh, with um, people, but I, I kind of don't want to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to invest a lot of time into this, so I don't want to give it out freely, um, but to uh, prospective employers and such like that, I am more than happy to uh, share my ideas. Um, and and my, pro my my work in progress and everything. So uh, again, feel free to uh, check out the blog. Um, stay tuned for more um, postings, and I hope you guys enjoyed this.